to harvest rhubarb is to grasp the stalk and pull away from the ground in exactly the direction the stalk is growing. It actually kind of like pulling the rhubarb out of the socket. I'm taking only the very largest stalks. Unfortunately, not in every case, I managed to get a very small stalk in that case. And by pulling the large ones, whoa, another little guy coming out. I'm uh, letting more sun into the smaller leaves, figuring that uh, gives them a better chance of growing up into large stalks. When I harvest rhubarb, I carry it to my compost pile before I go inside. I hold it over the compost pile and I take a knife and I just gently smack through it. Actually, I want to take off the whole leaf and I peel off the waste at the bottom of the stalk that I'm not going to eat. This way, I don't have to carry this stuff out of the house. You make rhubarb sauce a lot like you make applesauce. You start with these larger pieces of produce. In this case, the actual stems of the plant. You clean them up, cut them into shorter lengths and then cook them in a sauce pot, usually with a little added water. You see that this stalk is deformed here. It could be drying out. I don't really know. So just like you would around a questionable spot on an apple, I'm cutting that off. The rest I'm cutting into sections and adding to the stock pot. I prefer to work with a cutting board because you see I'm not always getting all the way through the fibrous skin of the rhubarb. When you use a cutting board, of course the knife slides right through it easily. So. When I make applesauce or rhubarb sauce, I like to make it thick. And the trick to doing that is to add the minimum amount of water you can to keep it from burning or sticking to the bottom of the pot. My goal is just to cover the bottom of the pot. Just a little bit of water over the whole bottom of the pot. I don't want it deep climbing up the side. When I cook this, I'm going to put a lid on it. I'm going to put it on very, very low heat and let it come up very slowly. And then the heat from cooking will release water from inside the rhubarb stem. It's been about 30 minutes. And when I lift the lid, I see that the liquid in there is boiling. There's quite a bit of it. You can see it's risen up. Uh, probably close to an inch from the bottom of the pot. And all that juice is cooked out of the rhubarb stalks. They look a little firm. But uh, you can see when I stir it around, they, some of them are breaking apart. So I'm going to let it continue to, to heat, to cook. Looks like it might go another 15 minutes, even a half hour. So everything's getting soft. But I just want these things to break apart with no effort at all. Okay, here we go. That bubbliness is a sure sign that this stuff is all cooked. This looks just about perfect to me. It's, it's wetter than I like. I must have added more water than I wanted to. So I'm going to kill the heat. And now deal with the most tricky part of making rhubarb sauce or really any rhubarb based product 
this stuff is as sour as can be. So it's important, unless you really like it sour, to uh, cut through that with some sugar. So for the amount of sauce I have here, it looks like about a quart. I'm going to start with half a cup. And I'm pretty confident that's not going to be enough. I like to add it while the rhubarb's hot so it dissolves quickly. I would not enjoy eating that. I'm sure adding another half cup isn't going to hurt at all. That was pretty nice. So for about a quart of rhubarb sauce, I've added a cup of sugar. And I like it. I think it's traditional to serve rhubarb sauce cold. So I'm going to let this cool for a little while. Then I'm going to put it in a container and put it in the refrigerator. And it'll be ready for dinner.